more time. If not, I will just record it like a regular video and you guys can just catch it catch it back. Um, it's never as fun when you guys aren't hanging out, but it's not notifying um, anybody. And I was having technical issues. So I'm sorry, you guys. I'm trying to work this out for like 10 or 15 minutes here. Um, if you are able to see this, maybe pop in and say hi. But otherwise, I'm going to get going here with the video. Um, what I'll say one more time really quick is if you are rewatching this back, because I have a feeling a lot of you guys aren't going to be able to catch it live because YouTube is being really weird. Um, I'm going to do a pinned comment um, where the information starts. Um, so if you're rewatching this back, you don't have to um, listen to any extra fluff. Yes, my hair is wet here. So I have notes for this because I really want to stay on track. I'm not going to be reading off the notes, but just in case, um, I, you know, I have anything that I don't want to forget. Oh, hi. Okay. I think hopefully it's working now. I have no idea what's going on. Um, hi. Welcome to the live. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for your patience. I'm like pulling my hair out. My hair is wet too, but it's one of those mornings. Okay, so I have notes. Um, I'm just gonna pull those up in case I need them. Otherwise, we're gonna get right into it. Um, oh, okay, cool, okay, cool. So hopefully that time worked. I don't think anyone was notified the first time and then I couldn't get it to start. So um, I decided to restart it and hopefully that fixes things. Um, if not, you know, you guys can always rewatch it back. I just feel like they're more fun. Oh, hi, Mary. Okay, I think it's working now, <laughs> yay, okay. You know, it's just so much more fun when a couple of you guys are here with me, I feel like. So, um, welcome to live. It seems like it is um, going now. I don't think my, um, I don't think my notes are going to work, but that's fine, I suppose. Um, okay, well, we'll go without the notes because they don't want to work. Okay, so today's video is going to be about Geek and Gorgeous. What is going on with my hair? <laughs> it's wet and it's always dry. It's like crazy. And we'll just, we're going to live with it. So Geek and Gorgeous is a really affordable brand. Um, they are by, oh, my, my notes are working. Yay. <laughs> um, they are by, if, the, if you guys are, have, are familiar with NCI Decoder, they're a website. Um, the same people who kind of run that website went on to launch Geek and Gorgeous. They're a very affordable brand. Uh, for me, they've been everything like I wanted the ordinary to be, but it wasn't, if that makes sense. You know, I want a brand that is affordable, but that still has really nice textures, really effective ingredients, um, that brings something a little bit interesting to the table. And I have found with the ordinary, there's a couple things from the ordinary that I really like. Um, the buffet and copper, copper peptides is a really nice one because you have the 1%. Um, you know, copper peptides and a nice wide array of additional peptides. You have a lot of nice humectants. So that's a nice offering from the ordinary. I also like their glycolic acid toner um, because they have 7% glycolic acid, which is effective. They also have like 20 different humectants and kind of anti-inflammatory ingredients that really help uh, reduce the inflammation or the irritating kind of properties from that glycolic acid. It's a really well formulated product. Um, but in general, like a lot of the ordinary formulas are sticky, gritty, um, they pill, um, you know, they're, they're kind of greasy feeling. Um, and they're also like very one note, you know, even though something's affordable, uh, there's just so many affordable options, especially from the K beauty side of things that have a really well rounded formula that I don't think you have to pay, you know, even if I don't, you don't have to pay a lot for something like that. So I don't think that the ordinary is always worth settling for, if that makes sense. I know they're popular, so that might be an unpopular opinion. So I was really excited when I saw Geek and Gorgeous. Um, and I think that they kind of have a similar concept as The Ordinary, but they do it better. Um, and, you know, there, none of these formulas I'm gonna talk about right now are like insanely complex, right? Um, but I think they do a good job. I think they're effective. And there's a couple little ingredients that they have um, that I just think are really interesting and we'll kind of talk about that makes them kind of very, um, you know, just evidence-based and you can tell that the formulators are, in, are kind of looking at the science. So I'll start with like the hydrating kind of type products here and then we'll go into like the exfoliants. Um, you know, I didn't order their whole line. I have seven of their products here to talk about, and I will also talk about the products that I didn't pick up and why. Um, I don't believe in just buying a whole line just for the sake of buying it. You know, I like to um, pick up what I think is well formulated um, and what I think is going to be a good product just to really set it up for success that has effective ingredients. Um, and then some of them just weren't for my skin type where I thought were a bit like trendy and not necessarily like the 10% nice in mind. So I'll talk about those at the end and like why I didn't get them, who they might be good for. Um, so I did get the liquid hydration. Um, this is a very watery, um, let me see if I can 
let me show you guys on screen here. I have like a scrape on my, on my hand. So it's, let me see if I can, you can see, hopefully kind of see, it's like the consistency of water. This is probably the only product I'm gonna talk about today that I have here that I could take it or leave it. You know, it does have a 5% panthenol, um, and then a lot of the humectants in here um, kind of mimic uh, our skin, our, the, the naturally occurring humectants that are found in our skin. So we've kind of talked about before, like if you think of the skin barrier as like a brick wall where you have skin cells that are, are the bricks and then the lipids in between are the mortar. Um, those skin cells have actually our own humectants inside of them. You might have heard of, of the natural moisturizing factor, uh, natural moisturizing factor, sorry. So that would be like uh, lactic acid, high molecular weight HA, glycerin, amino acids. So this kind of mimics that. Um, I think why I could kind of take it, like it's not bad and it has nice ingredients. I think the reason I could take it or leave it is it's not overly hydrating. It's very watery. It doesn't do a ton. Um, I wish that they had like maybe combined this with like their HA serum. Like I don't think you need a dedicated HA serum. And I think that if they had added a little bit of richness to this and some, some kind of more viscosity, some added HA, and in addition to all the other great humectants that they both contain, uh, that it would be a little bit better. So I actually like um, the stress less a little bit better than, than the um, natural moisturizing factor. Hi Chrissy, welcome. She said, hello, beautiful mirror and everyone. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Thank you for joining. I'm glad everyone seems to be finding the live. So I guess restarting it was the right call. Sorry if you guys who couldn't find it. It took me like 10 minutes to get it going and then when I started it, there were issues. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. So I, again, I've covered the um, liquid hydration so far. It is not a bad product. I could just kind of take it or leave it. Like I have hydrating toners in my routine. No, oh, my cat's claw is stuck on my sleeve. I have hydrating toners in my routine that I just kind of prefer. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not a bad product by any means. You know, if you needed to add, you know, eight, you know, a couple bucks to get you to like the shipping minimum, like you could definitely use this. I just tend to layer it with other products. Um, we've got cats. Of course, we've got cats. The puppy is sleeping, thankfully. I wore them out with a little walk before this. So that leads me to the Stress Last. Do I water? Thank God. The Stress Last is... Oh, Chrissy said, I'm so glad I made it. I've been off social media for a while and I've missed seeing you. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad you can make it too. I hope you've been feeling well. I, we, I know we both kind of deal with migraines and stuff, um, but you much worse than me. So I'm glad that you're here and I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Okay, I, if, by the way, if anyone has any skincare questions, um, kind of as we're chatting, you know, last live here on YouTube, we like talked about microcurrent and radio frequency. Uh, I will still be doing that this time. I'm just gonna try and kind of put them to the end. So you're welcome to kind of ask as we go. Just know that I will um, be answering at the end just for anyone re-watching. Okay, so the stress less, um, I hate that the, I should have written down my notes. I'm gonna do that for next live. I'll have handwritten notes. So the stress less is a simple formula, but I actually prefer this to the liquid hydration as well as their HA serum, um, which I don't even have. I think I decluttered it. It has a very nice light texture. So it's a very like, I wouldn't call this like a very concentrated, like active serum. It's more of like a gentle hydrating serum with a nice light texture. It really sinks in really nicely. Um, this has the maticasticide. This is in, it's one of the active components of Centella Asiatica. So it has anti-inflammatory benefits. It also has beta-glucan, which is a really nice humectant. Um, might have kind of anti-aging properties. Um, you know, there's not a lot of evidence there. Most of the, most of the information uh, surrounding its kind of wound healing and hydrating properties. One of my favorite humectants, I really enjoy it. Um, and you have some other kind of nice humectants in here. I think what I really like the most about this is the, um, I always butcher the name. Let me see if I have it in my notes so that I don't butcher it again. The, oh, the saccharide isomerate. <laughs> so this is a very moisturizing um, humectant. It's in the A Florence hydration booster that I love. This is really good um, for long-term hydration. So the stress less was sounds good for sensitive skin. Yeah, it has a nice like simple ingredient deck. You know, there's not a lot of ingredients in here that you're gonna react to. Um, everything is really simple and kind of non-irritating. Um, like something like the liquid hydration can be a little 
can be potentially an issue for someone who's like really reactive and sensitive because sometimes you can have an issue with like urea, for example, um, and something like this. So this, yeah, there should be very, I mean, again, so there, someone with sensitive skin has so many different triggers. I, it's hard to answer across the board, but in general, I would say yes. Um, and the saccharide isomerate, again, really good for uh, moisturizing the skin long term. A lot of times we have humectants that are good for short time hydra short term hydration. This really improves hydration over time and offers more lasting hydration. Um, I forgot. Where is my oh my cat? He. I wish you could. See, maybe I can lower it so you can see him. Can you see him? He's sitting on the stool with his body on the desk, um, which. Okay, I don't want fur. I'm gonna move you, buddy. He's, that's so desperate for attention. You can sit next to me. Okay, so but I, I'm sorry, you guys. These YouTube lives are a work in process. I'm gonna cover the cleanser really quickly. So this is the Jelly Joker. Hi, Celia. Um, hello. Where do you get the A Florence these days? The U.S. Stop Shop. I've only bought them from the their website in the U.K. Um, I know it's a little bit of a pain because they're generally, like if you're in the UK, they're a really affordable brand. Um, but if you're ordering from the States, you have to deal with the conversion from, you know, the UK currency to us and then the shipping. So it ends up being a little bit pricey. I try to order during a sale. They often have the, like 20% off sales. Um, and I will probably do that. Like the, we did the last video on like underhyped smaller brands. I would like to do a version of that for like international, like international or K Beauty, and they would definitely be featured. But yeah, unfortunately, I think that A Florence is only available on the other UK site. I would love if they um, had a US site because they have great products. They have the hydration booster that I really like. They have a really nice retinol oil that's very sensitive, skin friendly. Um, I'm testing out their salicylic acid oil with alpha lipoic acid. They have a nice vitamin C. Um, I'm using their cleanser right now. Really like small, wonderful brand. Okay, so for the Jelly Joker, uh, this is a very reminiscent to me of like the um, Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. So that is a low pH, non-foaming gel. Um, there's also, oh, hi, Monica. Welcome. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, it's been really, the YouTube lives are tough. I started it, or I, it took 10 minutes trying to get the live to start, and then I don't think it was working. So I'm glad the second time around is working. I'm so glad you could, you guys could find me. Um, I'm going to try, hopefully it'll be smoother every time. So the, again, this is very rem reminiscent to me of the um, Milky Jelly Cleanser from Glossier. Um, Chrissy too. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll all keep working on it. And I appreciate you guys kind of sticking with me and being patient because it, it's frustrating for me and I, and I hate knowing you guys are waiting and it's technical issues. It's so frustrating. So I appreciate you guys kind of sticking in there and trying to find it and still not being, you know, still coming to hang out with me. I appreciate you guys. Uh, there's also a, the, there used to be a Korean cleanser that I loved that was also a lot like the Glossier. It was like the, um, the Nani cleanser or something like that. Very similar texture, but it's discontinued. If you're into K-Beauty, you know the heartache. Like you'll find an incredible Holy Grail product and it'll be reformulated or discontinued every time. It's happened so many times to me, I swear. Um, the Can Make sunscreen, for example, um, so many incidences. So, um... Thank you, Christy. I really appreciate you guys. So this is very similar. So I was excited to find something like that after the K-Beauty, the Korean one was, was discontinued. Um, and this is a good alternative if you have like normal to dry skin and you find like those non-foaming cream cleansers can be, leave a little bit too much residue. Doing well. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. The, the, I love the lives, but I also feel like they're not one of my strengths. So I'm so appreciative that you guys have been like kind of stuck with me as I've gotten hopefully better and better. Like I would never be, I would never have jumped on a live without you guys encouraging me. So you guys rock. Um, this has a lot of gentle surfactants that you would normally find in like a micellar water. Um, like has the olive, O-L-I-V-E-M, olivum 1000. Um, so these, these are a combination um, of surfactant. Well, anyway, so basically the surfactants are so gentle that you would normally find them in like a micellar water. There's also a lot of nice like moisturizing and hydrating ingredients. Um, in a wash-up cleanser, most ingredients aren't going to 
like have effective um, results for your skin. So when someone says like there's green tea or nice and a mitogen cleanser, I'm like, whatever, that's not gonna do anything. Um, but humectant, like humectant type ingredients and moisturizing ingredients do help kind of soften the effects of the surfactant. Um, because no matter the way, the way you cut it, um, a surfactant is going to disrupt the skin barrier a little bit. It's just kind of the way that cleansing works in order to cleanse the skin. Um, you know, the molecules that we have surfactant molecules are going to cause a little bit of disruption and we can only kind of minimize it. So this is very gentle. It doesn't leave a residue. It's not going to be enough to break down really heavy makeup. So you'd want to pre-cleanse for sure. Um, or like a mineral sunscreen formula. Uh, but it's a great morning cleanser and it's great as a second cleanser. Um, so next up, I'm going to cover, I'll kind of go into like the exfoliant type products, which is going to be like the vitamin C and the mandelic acid. Um, yeah, next time I'm going to do the written notes just to keep kind of keep me on track. And so I'm not trying to like find them on my tablet here in front of me. Um, I, I should have kind of better thought that through. Um, yeah, the only thing I was going to say too was, yeah, the PEG-6 is, is a surfactant as well as the Plaxmer 184. Those are the very mild surfactants that are normally found in micellar waters. And then there, the specific um, humectants are xylitol, propendial, and then we also have allantoin and panthenol. So it's just, it's kind of just decreasing the kind of potentially drying effects and adding to the mildness of the cleansing in this. Okay, so for the Sea Glow, um, I'm actually really excited about this one. It's their vitamin C, it's 15%. Um, is this as, there's a train going by, so I'm just gonna keep talking, hope you can hear me. Is this as uh, stable or maybe effective as like the Dermalor vitamin C? Probably not, you know, I'm, this is, I wanna say like three months old. I've been testing, I placed two different orders and I've been testing these for months. So you can see I have, you know, a little bit of oxidation, nothing like this, this is very much still effective. I talk about it on Instagram. A little bit of oxidation is not a big deal. It does not reduce the efficacy. It's not damaging to your skin. You just want to kind of toss it when it becomes that burnt orange or like a really dark, dark, dark orange. So this is totally fine. It's not like quite as crazy stable as the Dermalor and it does have a slightly higher pH. Um, it still has a very nice light texture. Probably not quite as light as the Dermalor, but still very, very light. As you can kind of see, it's not sticky. Um, this is a really good budget option. Like someone who is on a budget, but still wants a really effective vitamin C formula. So you have the fit, you have all the kind of um, like minimum, com like the, the kind of components that you want in a, in, a, in a good vitamin C kind of based on the research from SkinCeuticals. You have a 15% ascorbic acid. You have the frulic acid and the vitamin E. You have a pH that is lower than 3.5. In fact, if we get a sec at the end, um, we can pH test the vitamin C and their AHA just for fun here. Uh, which formula would be better for sensitive skin, the Geek and Gorgeous or the Dermalor? I would, uh, so as far as ascorbic acid, I would say the Geek and Gorgeous because the pH is a little bit higher. Um, but, you know, in general often it's going to be the derivatives that are going to be better for sensitive skin. Um, something like the Mugu, the Kate Ryan, the Skin Actives, um, those will probably be a better place to start just because ascorbic acid can be a little tricky. Um, okay, so we have all the basics. We have the 15% ascorbic acid, the correct pH. We can, we'll even pH test at the end here. Um, the ferulic acid and the vitamin E, these are important um, both to kind of stabilize the formula and keep that, uh, that ascorbic acid stable as, as well as the pH, but it also actually enhances the photoprotection by eight times. Um, just the addition of ferulic acid and, and, and uh, multiplies, there we go, that's the word I'm looking for, Mira. Just the addition of ferulic acid increases photoprotection by four times, vitamin E and ferulic acid increases the photoprotection by eight times. I've tried the Skin Actives Antioxidant Serum and I really like that. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. You know, the texture is a little bit thicker just because you have so many antioxidants, um, but it's really nice. So is the Kate Ryan. If you don't mind a squalene, the Mugu is really good too. Uh, which vitamin C do you recommend for more normal mature skin, I think was it? Um, normal to dry mature skin. So for ascorbic acid, usually the Skin Actives, 20% um, vitamin C, not the uh, antioxidant one that we just mentioned just because it's so hydrating glycerin is like the second ingredient there's a lot of there is a little bit of pomegranate seed oil and just a really nice wide array of, of antioxidants it's going to really protect the skin so it's a really hydrating formula 
Um, I do like the Osteuticals for slightly more normal skin, but it could kind of be a pain to get it from Australia. Um, another really good option is to use ATHD uh, or ATIP, these are oil-based vitamin C derivatives like the Kate Ryan um, and the Mugu vitamin C and squalene with your ascorbic acid. So it'll actually Im improve the penetration and the effic efficacy of like an ascorbic acid like this and they're going to be a lot more moisturizing. So you can just use the Skin Actives or you can pair um, one of those options with your ascorbic acid. Okay, so what's exciting about this, other than kind of covering those basics that you want to look for in any ascorbic acid serum, is the sol the solvent that they use. Um, so just let me pull up the name so I don't butcher it because you guys know I'm terrible with I'm terrible with pronunciation. It's dimethyl um, <laughs> dimethyl isosorbide, I think. <laughs> Someone will correct me. So ferulic acid is not water soluble. So sometimes you'll see like DUI vitamin C formulas and that's always the sticking point is getting that ferulic acid, um, you know, is solubilized, you know, and kind of um, suspended properly in the formula. So that's why sometimes you'll see brands like Dermalore kind of skip, um, skip the, the you know, oh, well, sorry, Dermalore skips the vitamin E because that would require an actual emulsifier, um, but then you also need to properly get that ferulic acid in, in the formula. So they, they kind of are really smart in their approach with this one because they use that dimethyl isosorbide. That's not only, excuse me, kitty, that's not only going to be um, helping get that ferulic acid in, um, you know, suspended in the formulation, but it actually increases the penetration of the vitamin C into the skin. Um, they have several studies that I was able to find online showing that, it's, that it helps water-based um, active ingredients get into the skin, so not oil-based. Um, they did a study, and I guess it wasn't effective for that. My hair is starting to poof now that it's drying. So not oil-based, specifically water-based ingredients like ascorbic acid. Um, it helps get them into the skin. There was also a, um, like one small study, I don't think it was independent, but it found that it was also able to kind of enhance the activity of the ferulic acid. Um, and it kind of increased its antioxidant and its kind of brightening or skin lightening abilities. So that one is less established, um, but we do know that the solvent that they use can get water-based actives like the vitamin C better into the skin. So I thought that was really cool and really smart. Um, you know, you're, you're using something that you have, you already have to have in here anyway, right? You need to get that, that folic acid, you know, um, dissolved in solution, and then it's actually going to help the rest of the formula be more effective. Um, it's the same sol uh, solvent that Regimen Labs, uh, the vitamin X serum uses, which I will be testing next. So I just thought that was really cool. Um, and again, this is just a really good budget option. It's not as, you know, maybe as good as like my skin actives, um, just because it has such a wide array of antioxidants. This is really affordable and really smartly formulated. So next up is going to be the exfoliants that I picked up. So I went with the Smooth Out, which is a 12% glycolic acid, um, as well as their Cheer Up, which is the mandelic acid with a little bit of salicylic acid. Um, I skipped um, the, they have a salicylic acid and they have a PHA formula. I skipped both of those just because they weren't applicable to my skin type and we'll kind of cover them at the end. Um, I'll cover the Cheer Up first because I think this is going to be more friendly to, toward like a, or an array of different skin types. So this is a 5% mandelic acid with a 1% salicylic acid. This is nice um, because mandelic acid is an interesting molecule. Um, it looks basically like a glycolic acid mo molecule with a little ring, um, the benzene, benzene ring that salicylic acid also has. The reason this is relevant is basically it acts like an AHA where it's kind of resurfacing the surface of the skin but it can also really penetrate very lipid rich areas of the skin like your pores. So mandelic acid is gonna be really good for acne prone skin. It's also antibacterial. So again, really great for acne prone skin. It's typically safe for skin of color. Um, it's gentle due to that large molecule size, um, but it's versatile, right? It's doing an array of things. It's exfoliating like an HA. It's helping kind of exfoliate the pore lining a little bit um, it's, and it's antibacterial. The salicylic acid in here, 1%, isn't going to kind of deeply in, um, penetrate the pores like a 2%. It's not going to deeply exfoliate the pores, but it's going to have an anti-inflammatory effect. So great, you know, helps us be a little bit more friendly toward sensitive skin, toward acne-prone skin. It's going to enhance the effects of the mandelic acid. 
Um, so, you know, it's overall like a 6% total. Um, it's not like super sensitive skin friendly, but it's going to be a little bit, you know, gentler than your typical kind of exfoliants you kind of hopefully see. It's very watery, very light texture. For me, I like to use this on the T-zone only. So I'll do it, I get a little bit of congestion kind of in the brow area and on the nose and my chin, sometimes in the cheek area. So I will put it there only, um, you know, once or twice a week. And I find it really effective for that purpose. And it's gonna be really good for, honestly, I think a wide array of skin types, right? If you're more dry, you can kind of focus on the T-zone. Um, the texture is really light, so oily skin, acne prone skin can really use this. Um, and it's gentle enough where you're, if you're a little bit more sensitive, you can use this as well. So it's just a good formula. Um, if your concerns are anti-aging though, then you're gonna want the Smooth Out. This is not for sensitive skin. Um, it is 10% glycolic acid, 2% lactic acid. Um, so it is very potent. Um, even like I'm using tretinoin most nights, so I can only use this once a week. Um, and it's, it's a great once a week treatment. The evidence appears to indicate that a 10% glycolic acid and over is gonna be best for kind of collagen formation, those anti-aging properties. So if you're not ready to do a peel, this is a great like once a week treatment if your goals are anti-aging. Again, it's very potent. Um, there's a lot of nice humectants in here. You know, we have a yeast extract, um, we have the sugars, we have some polysaccharides. So even though the texture like it for this one is really thin too, it is a little bit more hydrating than the Cheer Up. If I can get the top off, you can see it's a kind of a similar uh, watery texture. Um, but it does feel a little bit more kind of conditioning as you apply it, even though it's really thin. So really great formula, again, very potent. Do not use this if you have sensitive skin and be very careful if you are using tretinoin. Um, but they're both excellent. I think they do a really good job on exfoli exfoliants. Um, so that leaves the last one. I saved the best for last and then we'll go into pr the products that I did not pick up and kind of why. Um, Make sure I didn't leave anything out. Oh, the last thing I was going to add for the cheer up is that there is an ingredient in here. It's an amino acid called sar sarcosinine. Sarcosinine pronunciation is again not my thing. Um, this is an amino acid that may potentially help regulate oil production. I'll post a link in the description of, the, of this video. Um, once it goes live, kind of about neurocosmetics, so I just thought that was interesting. I couldn't find a ton of research on this, um, but they, that's what they kind of claim. So, last one is going to be the A-Game. This is my favorite product um, that they carry hands down. In fact, this is my second bottle, and I think I just used it up this week. I don't know if I'll be able to, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get anything out to show you because I just used, yeah, nothing left in here. So this is bottle number two that I've used up. I think that says a lot because I do have a lot of products, you know, that I'm testing or that I'm using. For me to really love something and use two bottles up very quickly says a lot. Um, this kind of breaks the rules for me, right? Um, normally, my general rule is that in order to get an effective over-the-counter retinoid um, at a stronger percentage, Hi Claudia, welcome. I love. I I'm so impressed by them. The, I think the only. I mean, this isn't even the like, liquid hydration isn't even bad. I just kind of take it or leave it, um, you know. But so impressed with everything I've tried. They're such a solid brand, um, and everything that I wish the ordinary had been the first time around. Um, this is just so good. I mean, normally what I, t I tell you guys all the time. You know, I usually say, you know, look, in order to get an effective, more potent, over the counter. Uh, retinoid like retinal or retinol you're going to need to spend at least like $40 like the Paula's Choice sometimes you can find the Obagi kind of on sale um, this breaks that rule so this is the point one. they also have a point zero five. Um, retinal to hide is one is a little bit less proven than retinol but is it is a step closer to that retinoic acid um, the early research that we have on retinal to hide indicates that one, it's, it's a little less irritating than retinol or retinoic acid or something like tretinoin. Um, it also has anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties, so it has a lot of potential for being really good for acne. Um, there was one study that paired kind of head-to-head -head with tretinoin and found it just as effective for anti-aging. Again, that's one study and it was short-term. So we don't have a ton of research on it yet, but it's a very promising over-the-counter option. Um, and this is really well for, I wish I, could, I wish I had any left to show you. I should have thought about that. It's like a um, cream serum texture. So it, and it's very moisturizing. You have a lot of um, 
esters in here, which are going to be very emollient and moisturizing. Um, you have a lot of nice um, triglycerides, which are going to kind of help lock in moisture. Um, they also have the cloudberry oil. Typically, you'll see retinol with cloudberry oil um, because there's one manufacturer that pretty much supplies almost everyone that sells retinol um, because you really have to keep it stable. So there's a there's the one. Uh, the Retin, I want to say it's Retin, it's not Retin Star, Iconic A. Um, it's Iconic A. Typically supplies everybody because they, they're the main manufacturer that was able to encapsulate and really keep Retinol um, stable. The issue though is a lot of Retinol products have essential oils. Um, Osmosis, um, Michel, um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of brands have the essential oils. The only one that doesn't, aside from this one, I think I want to say is the Aven, which I've recommended for a while. This has replaced that recommendation. I think it's just as good for a fraction of the cost. Um, and then again, there's, you know, if you're a little bit oily, if you're combo oily, you can even use this as a moisturizer at night. Um, it has humectants, emollients, and occlusive ingredients in here with the retinol. So it's perfectly fine to use this as a moisturizer where with more normal to dry skin, you'll want to use this underneath. Um, and I really like that this has the bisaccharide gum. Um, basically, they take sorbitol, which is a sugar, and they ferment it via bacterial fermentation. Um, I just found it a really interesting ingredient. They kind of compared it. Most of the data is manufacturer studies. Some of them are on humans. Um, but they use this bisaccharide gum. One, it improves the texture of this product. Um, they also kind of compared it head to head with hyaluronic acid, and they found that it was equally hydrating but also improved hydration over time. It lasted much longer. Um, and there, there's some potentially kind of anti-aging properties as well and resurfacing properties. Um, but again, the data is mainly kind of manufacturer funded and not all of it was on intact to, you know, topically on skin. So I find it an interesting ingredient. Um, I think mainly we can say it's, it's likely hydrating and it improves the texture of the product. Um, my favorite product. If I had to pick one product from Geek and Gorgeous, it would be the Retinol. It's really good. Um, I would say if I had to pick this or the Obagi Retinol, which is my favorite, I think the Obagi is a little bit better um, for like resurfacing. I feel like my skin is a little bit smoother. It kind of controls congestion just a tiny bit more. But this is, I think, $18 for the um, 0.1 and $12 for the 0 0.05. So it, it's a great product um, and it doesn't have those essential oils so it's awesome I think I missed a comment here um, I really love my rewind serum can you use them both at the same time yes definitely um, niacinamide is a really in great in a great ingredient for when you're using retinoids um, it helps come the skin better tolerate them so they're a really great combo um, you know and they're both offering kind of anti-aging benefits so you can absolutely use them together um, in fact that would be a really great pairing because you get a really nice wide um, array of beneficial ingredients so I'm gonna pop up the products that I didn't get here which I think I listed at the bottom and just kind of explain why um, let me take a sip of water and then we'll finish this video by pH testing some of the active ingredients just to make sure that they're still in range um, I would say I'll kind of order these maybe I guess in terms of it's hard to order them. They're all good. I think it kind of just depends on your skin type and kind of your goals and what you need in your routine. I would say the A game again is my number one recommendation just because again, this breaks the rules. Typically you have to kind of splurge a little bit for a more potent and very effective over the counter retinoid. Great. Just a great product. Um, I would say if your goals are anti-aging, like the, the A game and the smooth out, great. Um, if you are a little bit more sensitive, then I would say to get the stress less. Um, if you want like a hydrating, soothing product, the stress less is really great. Um, if you're a little bit more oily and acne prone um, or congested, then I would pair the cheer up with the A game. Um, you could use the stress less honestly in there too. If you're, you know, a little bit more oily, acne prone, sensitive, these guys are all pretty appropriate. Just get the 0 0.05 for the A game. Um, yeah, and then I would say the C glow is good for anyone who's wanting to prevent oxidative stress, you know, oxidative damage to the skin and kind of prevent aging under sunscreen. Um, and then their cleanser is pretty all purpose. I think even a more oily skin type could use this in the morning. Might not be good enough for PM. 
Um, and, you know, and then the liquid hydration, again, it's not bad. Um, you could definitely layer it with the uh, stress less for some added hydration. I just would kind of more pick this up if, you know, you need to make the ship in minimum or something. There are just other hydrating toners that I prefer more. Okay, so that's kind of like the wrap up. Um, the other products that they have and that I didn't pick up were one, they do you have an azelaic acid? This poof. Um, it's an azelaic acid derivative and those just aren't, it's a 10% if I recall correctly. The, the derivatives for azelaic acid, there's just not a lot of good evidence there, so that's why I skipped on it. I prefer just to get uh, straight up azelaic acid. They also have a 10% niacinamide serum. I believe it has the zinc, similar to the Ordinary. Um, if you really like the Ordinary one, um, but you don't like the pilling, I'm sure that this would be a good option. I just think it's a really trendy, overhyped product right now. All the research on niacinamide is at the two, two to five percent mark. You don't really need that higher percentage, um, you know. And if it can be a little bit drying and irritated once you get past five percent, so I just don't think it's necessary. I also like to see niacinamide in a formula like the Rewind we just mentioned, where it's just doing a little bit more. You, you've paired it with the N-acetylglucosamine to enhance the brightening and anti-aging effects have added ingredients like DMAE and panthenol um, or like the liquid gold also from Stradia you know you have the barrier focused you know aspect of niacinamide you're pairing it with ceramides and cholesterol and fatty acids um, I don't think you need like a standalone niacinamide product I think that it should be paired with other ingredients depending on the goals of the formulation if that makes sense uh, same with the HA serum that Geek and Gorgeous sells they have an AHA light and an AHA rich um, it has like five different types of um, HA. I just don't think you need a dedicated HA product. You know, I think that you should just pick like a hydrating toner with some HA and other nice humectant ingredients. Um, or pick something like the um, Hylamide from Desium. They have their sub-Q skin, which also has five types of HA, but they've added in um, you know, a variety of different ingredients like the yeast extract and the glucuronic acid that can actually help, potentially help the skin produce more hyaluronic acid over time. Um, they have the dermal, forget the name, it's the same active ingredient as the needle serum from dermatology, Neodermal. Um, it's, it's this main active ingredient from the needle serum that was really hyped up from dermatology, but a fraction of the cost. So I would get something like the, uh, Hylamide sub-Q skin over like their HA serum, you know, or just get a hydrating toner. You just don't need that dedicated HA. Um, the other two products I think I skipped on was they recently launched a 2% salicylic acid. Um, there's just so many 2% salicylic acid formulas and it's not really for my skin type, so I skipped on that one and I'm sure it's fine. And then the last one was the Calm Down, which is a 3.2% PHA and I believe there's some salicylic acid in there too. Um, PHAs are just a little bit less proven like the mandelic acid in the Cheer Up, um, so that's why I skipped on it personally. Um, it did look like it was very hydrating. There was a lot of nice humectants in there. Um, some anti-inflammatory ingredients. Looks like it offers some gentle hydration. Um, you know, so I I'm sure it's a good product. I just felt like the Cheer Up um, was better for congestion and better for acne. Um, uh, though I will say if you want a mandelic acid that's very hydrating and bright brightening get the Stradia soft touch okay I think that's that's it um we'll pH test them right now just for fun but let me know if you guys have any questions about the products we talked about um I can definitely suggest like how to use them in a routine too like if you have if your skin aren't you know if your if your skin concerns are like anti-aging or dryness or acne I can definitely suggest like a routine with some other products as well. Just let me know um, or if you have any other questions. Um, sub Q Skin is fantastic. Yeah, it's such a great, such a great product. I actually just ordered a fresh bottle as well as some Niod and like the one product I like from The Ordinary. It's just a really good hydrating serum. It's amazing with the Stradia Rewind um, because n glucosamine and the Stradia is a precursor for hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is made out of two little building blocks glucuronic acid and N-acetylglucosamine, and they just kind of alternate. That's how it's kind of how it's made up. And the, the idea is if you have more of these precursors, your skin might be able to make more hyaluronic acid. So I love the pairing of the Q Skin and the Rewind. That's like such a good pairing in my book. And yes, I also, I, I just tend to, 
um, meet the shipping minimum for Geeky Gorgeous, but I, if you're just trying to try out like one product, I know it's not reasonable. Um, and I will say that I wish that some of the exfoliants, um, like when you get, like this bottle was like 30 bucks for the big size. Um, so I do kind of wish that, like you realize that the cost isn't as quite as affordable when you start to get these bigger sizes. Cause four mil or a hundred mil, um, or 3.38 ounces, isn't that big of a size if, and then when you, you know, it was 30 bucks. You can get the mini, I think for like 12 to 18, but that's like such a, you know, so the cost per ounce maybe isn't as affordable. Okay, let's pH test some things. If you have guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll kind of end it after this. Um, but yeah, this would be the time at the end of the live if anyone has any questions about the products or honestly any other skincare or treatment uh, questions. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun just to kind of make sure that the pH is in, within range. Um, for something like mandelic acid and salicylic acid, which we will test just for fun, when you have molecules um, that are that penetrate lipid-rich areas of the skin really well and have that benzene ring, the pH isn't, um, they, these, this penetrates really well anyway, so it's not as dependent on the pH. Where for NAHA or vitamin C, um, because they're water-soluble molecules, they just really don't get into the skin and they're charged molecules, the pH is really important. And when you drop that pH, um, it makes the it makes it slightly more of a neutral charge and it's able to get into the skin properly. So it's really important for these guys. Um, if you guys don't know, if you've ever pH tested, you just can get these little cheap strips. They're not as um, precise as like a pH meter, but they're super cheap. They're kind of fun to have to make sure. Like I think it's really important to test the pH of your cleanser. So I guess we can, if I have water, yes I do. You know, so it, higher than a, about a pH five to six is gonna be detrimental um, to the health of your skin. We have an acidic skin surface and there's a lot of pretty compelling research indicating that when you disrupt uh, the acidic nature of the skin surface that it has, you know, lasting effects on the skin barrier health, etc. So, okay, let's test. Um, we'll do the vitamin C. Again, this is the oldest. It has slight oxidation. So I'm, if it's off, it might just because there might be pH changes over time, which you guys could see here. I'm just kind of dripping it right over top. And I'll let it sit for a sec. So I dripped it over here. I'm gonna leave it to the side and we'll do the next one. I'll keep them next to each other. Maybe I can, I haven't tried the sub Q, it sounds good. Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, okay, sorry, I was trying, gonna try to see if you guys could see with me. So I think it'll be more interesting for you guys. There we go. I hate the shirt. I like the black version of the shirt, but I don't like the brown one, I don't know why. Okay, so I have the little strip sitting here with the vitamin C. Also going to do the AHA. Get the pop top off here. Okay, so I'm just dripping it over. And I'm gonna kind of keep the bottles next to them so I keep track. And then we'll do the Mandelic acid just for fun. And then we'll do the cleanser. When I pH test cleansers, I like to test the pH um, the way that I would use them, which is with a little bit of water. Like I'm wasting on a lot of product. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so we'll do the Hmm, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. I'm just going to do it in my hand and then it'll kind of make a mess, but oh well. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of the gel in my hand and then I'm just going to add a little bit of water from my water bottle. Maybe that was too much and then I'm just going to stir it in. Just because you're going to be using a cleanser with water. So that's kind of how you would like, you want to test it. This one's a little bit trickier. I'm just gonna try and scrape up some of that. Of course, I didn't grab a towel, so I don't think I thought this through properly. <laughs> oh well, it's at the, we're almost to the end here anyway. Okay, so I'm just making sure it's kind of thoroughly coated in the cleanser. Okay, so I'll put the cleanser one at the end. Ooh, I'm just gonna 
wipe this off with my hair tie. Okay, so we can go ahead and check them here. I'm gonna lift this back up and we'll compare. So give me one sec here. Nope, that's the wrong lever. And my ring light. Oof, that wasn't half workout. Nope, way too high. Oh my God. There we go. All right, okay, so number one, the vitamin C here. So you just take, after it's been sitting for, it's under, it's about 30 seconds. You're just gonna hold it up and kind of use this as a key, if that makes sense. So, the, it's good, okay, let me see if I can wanna do it in a way that you guys can see. So it's looking like it's between, it's kind of blurry, three and two. Um, I would say it's closer to the two. Yeah, it's like it, hmm. I'll give this a little bit longer, but I would say that it's showing as under pH three when it should be between three and four. Um, but again, these are not gonna be quite as accurate as a pH meter. What we do know is that it's under the pH 3.5 that it needs to be, but it's showing up a little bit more acidic. And then for the AHA, which is supposed to be 3.4 to 3.9 per the website. I'll show you guys. Um, so it looks again, right at three, maybe a little bit over. And it can, they can change a little bit as they have longer to settle. So that again also is an effective pH to get into the skin, even if it's not quite exact. And then we have the mandelic acid. This one looks just about the same as the AHA. So I guess kind of show you guys here. So that would be, um, looks like it's just right under around three around three and then lastly the cleanser <laughs> I think it's right between four and five you guys can tell me sorry that was really up and close and personal okay so you know they're within range again pH strips are not super active super active you always want to use them at or accurate you always want to use them as a guide not a rule they're not as um, accurate as a pH meter they can kind of tell you like is this chemical exfoliant um, oh I hate that angle that's a terrible angle is this chemical exfoliant getting into my skin um, you know is is the the active ingredient getting into my skin the way it's supposed to and you know is this cleanser gonna be you know detrimental to skin health or preserve the acidic nature of the skin. So, okay you guys, I think that is it. Um, I wish I had a code with Geek and Gorgeous. I don't think they have that yet. I know they have like the affiliate links, which maybe I'll link one um, once this video is live, if I remember, but they don't have the code yet. It would be cool if they did, and I'll definitely, I'll definitely, you have to read them right at, yeah, they, I did, yeah, you, it's within 30 seconds. If they settled, if they dry, they're not gonna be fully accurate. Um, let me put these away. And I do have a version on my stories of me testing the AHA. And I think the, it might've been just for the AHA, but it's pinned on my IG stories. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, I'm gonna help, go ahead and probably end this now. Oh, sorry, I missed something. Sorry, you guys, let me catch up. Yeah, <laughs> if you have any questions, God, I'm so rude, unintentionally. <laughs> let me, I, if you have any questions, I will answer and then we'll end the story, the one, the live. Sorry, you guys, my brain today. Um, okay, hi, Shakira, awesome review. I'm just curious if you've tried the Timeless um, and if you have an opinion on it, thank you. Would love more brand reviews. Yeah, definitely, I'm gonna do, the next step is gonna be the Regimen Labs. I need, do need to, finish testing everything. Sorry, the puppy is snoring, you guys. I can, Leo, um, stop snoring. Okay, I tried the Timeless a really long time ago. It's not really for my skin type, so I didn't love it. Um, I don't think it's a bad formula. All the basics are there. Um, I do find that a lot of people find it irritating due to that pH range. It's like a 2.8. Interestingly, the Dermalor is even lower and people tend to not find it as irritating. So it could be the other ingredients too. Um, I think for me with the Timeless, like, I think it's fine. I think the, the, the pH, the concentration, and the added antioxidants are all there. Um, I just find that I tend to prefer a little bit more from my vitamin C formulas. You know, the Skin Actives is really hydrating and has a ton more antioxidants. 
Um, you know, the Dermalore has a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more targeted toward brightening and hyperpigmentation and it's Anvil that super low pH is gonna really get in, your, the ingredient into the skin. Um, even the Sea Glow, you know, has that dimethyl isosorbicide, I wanna say. <sighs> um, you know, which is going to really, again, potentially help the, 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 help the activity of the ferulic acid, but again, it's also gonna get that vitamin C into the skin. So, you know, I think the timeless is a little bit basic, um, but it's gonna do the job. I just didn't totally love it. Um, okay, what azelaic acid do you recommend? I've tried the ordinary, but I don't like the texture of it. Um, so I do like the Cause de Baja azelaic acid to start out. Um, as like acid, one needs to be, the overall formula needs to be at a specific pH for stability, um, but it also can be kind of tricky to keep stable and to kind of, um, uh, to, it's, and to kind of get it, to, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, just properly kind of suspend it in solution. There we go. Um, so it can be kind of tricky, which is why you'll see a lot of textures that aren't the nicest, right? Like you'll see like the kind of um, thicker texture of the ordinary one. I do like the Cause de Baja. You will notice though, it has a little bit more slip to it. It's nothing that I think is horrible. I just use it at nighttime and it's, per it's honestly perfectly fine, but just know that, you know, often you won't see these beautiful textures with azelaic acid. And I think that's why we're seeing those derivatives, um, even though they're not as effective. And that's not, per I just, I don't think that texture should take priority over efficacy and evidence. So I understand why, you know, that in the, with a regular azelaic acid, you probably get people complaining over the texture and blah, 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 but there's just not a lot of um, evidence on those derivatives. And then the other one I really like is um, the 20% from Melazepam. You can get it on Amazon. It's in my Amazon store. It's really potent. So for you, you'll want to try probably do the Cause de Baja first. Um, again, it's very potent. It's gonna, it's kind of like that classic prescription cream. It's a little bit grainy. You'll want to use it at nighttime. Um, and then you, you can also get, I also have, have it in my prescription from Dermatica. So you can get it with tretinoin at an 8% or a 15%. And then they also have a separate 20% cream that you can buy that's just the azelaic acid. I really like the textures of the Dermatica and I just now got a code with them. They'd reached out to me before of the summer, but we had gotten that discount um, when we did the live with Dr. Mamina, which is not affiliate in any way, but it was the better discount. So I didn't wanna, um, I didn't wanna accept a code and have them end the better discount for you guys. So, um, last one here, I think that was um, ready. Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. I really like the black version. I don't know why I don't like the brown as much. Um, Love regimen lab with dermalore vitamins. Yeah, the regimen I'm gonna be testing next up. Um, this guy is almost used, oh nope, this guy is almost used up. You can, hopefully you can kind of see. Um, nope, yeah, you can't see it all. That was not helpful. It's it's like to right here. So this guy's almost, and it might kind of oxidize before I get there. So I'm gonna shortly be starting on the regimen X Factor. Um, and and then after that, I'll test them testing. Them. Oh, I did start on their cleanser and their wave serum, if that's the right name. So it, that one is foaming. Um, it's, it lathers a little bit, so I'll talk about it in the review. With those, it's so important that you don't go right into your face. If you have a cleanser that's really thick and like gel like that, and then you like put straight on your face and then lather, you end up with way too many surfactants on your face. You really want to use a tiny amount and really get it to kind of lather first. Um, okay, I think that's it, you guys. Um, let me get on with my day and do a ton of work. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and kind of sticking through <laughs> all the YouTube technical issues. Um, but hopefully that was fun. And I'll do, I'll try to do like an Instagram version, um, kind of like I, how I did uh, with the small skincare brands. I did just like a little text overview with the image and like a little summary um, of, you know, all the small skincare brands we covered in the last live. So I'll try to do that as well, just as like a cliff notes, um, just because I think that this is a really good brand and it's really affordable and they just need to have a US site with, with um, better shipping. So, all right, you guys, I'm gonna end the live. It'll take a little while to upload and you guys can watch it back. Um, and then I'll put the pinned comment 
and in the description with the link um, and with like the timestamps um, from when we get started and when the review ends. So have a wonderful rest of your week and have a great Wednesday and thanks for hanging out with you guys. Bye all. It takes, a, why is, is this, it takes longer to end than the, the Facebook. So I feel like I say bye and then it's me awkwardly ending the live.